What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So recently I just watched a video by Daniel Schiffer. If you don't know who he is, are you living under a rock? He's a phenomenal creator and he does a lot of really cool videos. He did like a spec ad for like a beer or I've seen him do it for, you know, uh, seltzer water, other commercials like that. So that's what we're gonna do today. We are going to make a Daniel Schiffer style video with inside DaVinci Resolve today. Yeah, let's do that. I got this from the dollar store. It's really cheap. I know in his video, he actually used a dedicated, it's like the five in one reflector that's uh, either green on one side and blue on the other. I don't have one of those. I figured we're just gonna do this on the cheapest budget possible. All right, let me show you uh, what I have set up and uh, kind of how I assembled this. All right, so first off, we've got the Blackmagic Pocket 4K uh, with a Speed Booster Sigma 18 to 35. I normally have this bad boy, all kinds of rigged up crazy more, but just for these uh, few little shots, I don't need to do much more. Uh, I stole this little swivel thing from my wife's kitchen, uh, from our kitchen, I guess, and uh, it works good. It spins and it kind of, I don't know, it wobbles a little bit, so we'll see how that's gonna work. Again, I got that from the dollar store, that little blue card stock. Uh, I've got a little extra aperture light right here, just kicking fill to kind of give me some hard reflection light onto the can. And then I've got the Light Dome Mini uh, Mark II with the uh, Genbei EF150D. Uh, LED light, it works really good together. Um, uh, one problem I noticed is with the can sitting on the wood, I was getting a lot of reflection onto the chrome. So I went downstairs and I grabbed one of our espresso uh, little cups and I put it on top of it and gaff taped it underneath. That way the reflection is silver coming onto it. Fingers crossed that this turns out as good as I'm hoping. Uh, let's do this. I haven't seen it as of right now, but you guys are about to see it uh, with the magic of editing. So uh, let's cut to that right now. So for my first take, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. There's a few things that I might tweak or change next time I would shoot something like this. You kind of learn a lot when you're shooting something you really haven't ever shot before, so it's really a trial and error. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you would like to see more of. Would you like to see me tackle more of Daniel Schiffer style videos? Would you like to have me do other videos like another creator did, trying to recreate it? So let's jump inside DaVinci Resolve, and I'm gonna show you guys how I assembled this this and how I pieced it together. So as you can see, I've actually got five different video clips right here creating this final effect. But you can see, I wound up actually shooting this twice. I did one uh, from a little bit of a higher angle and then I did a second time uh, down even with it. That is a bonus tip for you guys. Anytime you're gonna be doing any kind of this compositing or you know keying something out specifically like this, you really wanna make sure that camera is perfectly even with whatever subject you're doing. I like to know what background I'm gonna put it on first. So I know Daniel Schiffer did kind of a beach vibe theme going on with his, and that's cool. I know I'm recreating his style of video, but I wanna do something a little bit different. Art Grid has a plethora of different video styles like this, different video clips. Uh, go check them out, they're really good. Uh, I've got a link that'll give you two extra free months. So I looked up like mango fruits, water, you know, uh, orange powder, exploding, stuff like that. So now that we have all the stock footage, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the melon slices. I like that it was exploding up, but I did not want that. I wanted it exploding out. So a trick that I did is I grabbed, we'll just go right here, we'll set an out point. I grabbed this video clip and I dropped it in my timeline. I got it to where I thought looked good, probably right there. We don't need it completely off the frame. And I wound up taking it and I turned the rotation angle under the inspector and I turned it 90 degrees. I like it exploding, but I wanted it to come from the corner. So I'm just gonna flip it 
and uh, we're just gonna grab it and we're gonna drag it all the way over here, right there. The next thing I did was took the exact same video clip. I hold Option on a Mac and I lift it up and copy it. Uh, you can also right click, hit copy, uh, and then you can just paste it on top of it. Uh, but I took the same video clip, just moved it way over here, reversed it, lined it up, you can kind of see that it is a mirror effect, but I knew with the can floating in the middle, it really wasn't gonna be that big of a deal. I think that looks good. I am actually gonna do one more thing that I will show you later. I'm gonna copy this one more time and I'm just gonna drag it over here out of the way. I'll explain in a bit. Uh, we are gonna highlight both of these, right click on it, new compound clip. We're just gonna put mango. The next step I did was find the powder explosion. I think that looks pretty good. I already had it starting to explode because I knew, again, the can is gonna be hiding it a little bit. That should be good right there. Go ahead and drag it out. Uh, then what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna hop inside the Fusion page. I'm gonna click on the Media N1. I'm gonna hit Shift Spacebar and I'm gonna look for a key and I'm gonna look for Delta Keyer. We're gonna add that. I'm gonna go right over here under the Inspector background color, I'm gonna click the little color picker and I'm gonna click that, kind of find the color that I want. Click also the bottom one and I am going to make both of them black. I think that looks pretty good. I'm really not gonna change a whole lot because again, I'm stacking multiple clips so it should work fine and yep, you can see it's not an amazing key, but it will work for what we need. A lot of this that's missing in the middle, it's just adding onto the video clip. That's really all that matters. Now we're on to the main subject, the can itself. We're gonna hop inside the color page. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna right click underneath it. We're gonna add an alpha output. We are gonna connect the blue to the blue. And now we gotta get rid of this blue background. So we're gonna go to the color picker we're gonna make sure right here that we've got the picker selected, and then we're just gonna click and kind of drag a little bit, getting most of the blue. If you've got a little bit more blue, because again, I really wasn't lighting this background amazingly, so it's not very even, uh, I'm gonna click another picker, I'm gonna add another one, and we are gonna highlight some more, see if that gets majority of it. You can also click this little magic wand up here for the highlight. Uh, and you can do black and white. That'll make it a little bit easier. Under here, we're going to clean up the black a little bit. We're gonna clean up the white a little bit. And I am also gonna add just a little bit of a blur radius, not a whole lot. And I am gonna denoise it just a little bit. Now, if I unclick that, uh, you can see that actually looks pretty good. Other than one problem, it's the wrong thing. We're keying out the blue, but we can't see the can. So what we're gonna do is right here where our color pickers are at the very end, you see this little invert button. We're gonna click that, boom, it's gonna bring that up. Now if you need to fine tune some things, let's go ahead and clean up that white a little bit more. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop inside the edit page again. I'm gonna hover this can over the video clips just so I can see what's going on. Uh, make sure everything looks good. I do have a little bit of a blue spill on there, but again, it's not the end of the world because luckily for me, the background image that I have is blue and orange. So I kind of got a teal orange effect going on, didn't even tend for that, but it works out really well. So any kind of spill, it kind of just looks like it would be from the background going on. So now what we're gonna do is we need to make this a fusion clip. So I'm gonna right click on it and I am gonna go to new fusion clip. Now, if you do not do this step and you're having problems, it's probably because of this. I did this multiple times and could not figure out what was going wrong. I skipped making this a fusion clip. So then when I went to mask my thing out, my blue screen that I had done on the color page, it just turned black and freaked out. So it's easier to go ahead and key your background out, get all that nice and pretty, then create a fusion clip and then bring it inside a fusion so you can then mask out the can or any of the background stuff that you don't want. So once I'm inside the fusion page, I'm gonna bring these over here. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger just because I know I just need to see the bottom. There's two different ways you could do this. You could just highlight the can or you could take out the bottom. Uh, it's easier for me, I think, to take out the bottom than it is to take out the can. It's less than I'm having to cut out. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I'm not clicked on anything and I am going to go ahead and add a polygon. 
uh, we're going to add it right inside here. If for some reason you are clicked on media one and you go ahead and add a polygon, it's going to automatically link it. The problem with that is you're not going to be able to see what you're masking out. So I'm going to uncheck those and then I'm going to mask everything out. Last step, I will relink that back and all the stuff will be the same. Uh, you're just able to see what you're doing. So with the polygon selected, I'm going to click the little checker right here and we are just going to start drawing a rough outline. Sure, that looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and add a keyframe on all of these right here, just making sure that we lock that in. Uh, I'm going to hold down and highlight all these and we can grab and move it over a little bit. Because my can was not in the center, I have to kind of move this over and adjust it a little bit. And if everything's good, but maybe you need to just adjust these right here, you can highlight those and you can bring that up just like that. I'm literally just going frame by frame and I am moving, tweaking and just adjusting it just a little bit, getting everything nice and fine and tuned. Once we're done with that, and again, I just sped through this, I would take a little bit more time and fine tune and make this really good, especially if this is for a product that someone's paying you for. The only thing I'm really gonna change is I'm just gonna go up here under the polygon, uh, under the inspector, and I am just gonna add a little bit of a soft edge. I'm talking like a tiny amount, just to give it a little bit of, uh, you know, just a little bit of cushion, a little bit of softness, just to make it not be so harsh. Uh, I am then going to grab the gray box right here on the polygon and I'm going to drag it, connect it. It masked it out, but again, it's the opposite. No worries. Just hop over here again under the polygon and you can hit invert and it'll immediately take that out. If you are happy with everything on it, what I would do is I would right click on it and I would do a new compound clip. I will explain why in just a second. We're going to go ahead and create it. Now that everything is in it and it's looking nice and good, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna right click on it and I am actually going to do retime controls again. I'm gonna bring this right over here on top of our other images. I'm gonna find where I think looks good and we are gonna add a speed point. I am going to then click on that and I am going to change the speed to 200%. So it kind of ramps into it a little bit and I am going to click down on that arrow again and we are gonna add a freeze frame. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drag it way out here and then cut my clip over. I know my can sits there at the end, but the clip is not long enough. And if there's any little micro wobbles and stuff, it's going to bother me. So it's easier just to do this method. The last few things I'm going to do to this can is I'm actually going to size it up. So I'm going to drop that actually a little bit. I'm going to add a keyframe on zoom and rotation. And then I'm going to go to the very beginning right here and I'm going to size it down a little bit. Nothing too crazy. And I am actually going to do the rotation angle a little bit off kilter. That way it kind of turns when it comes in. Then I need to add that water. So I'm going to drop it right here. I'm going to go ahead and make it as long as the video clip is. You can see it's not doing the exact same thing. Instead of keying this out, I'm just gonna tweak with the composite mode. And I found uh, Divide works really good for what I'm doing. It brightens it quite a bit, but for this specifically, it looks pretty good. Uh, I can turn down the opacity a little bit so it's not so bright. One last thing that I forgot to mention, I'm gonna drag this out one more uh, and we're gonna bring back that piece of fruit uh, we can hop inside Fusion just like that. Only problem is, is it's just gonna be our normal video clip up and down like it normally is. But what I like to do is again, I like to create a new Fusion clip, hop back inside Fusion, and now it will be the correct spot, the correct way, everything about it. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna add a polygon and we are going to mask one of these pieces of fruit out just the same. If you wanna zoom in, you can make it a lot easier by zooming in a little bit. And we are just gonna chop this piece of fruit out. Make sure you add keyframes every time you're gonna move something, otherwise you're gonna kick yourself later and it's gonna suck. Uh, then we're gonna move a couple of spots. I'm gonna highlight all of them and I'm gonna move it over. 
Uh, the problem with this piece of fruit specifically that I highlighted is it's actually turning. So I couldn't do a whole lot of grab all of them, move it over, grab a whole lot of them, move it over. I actually had to move individual ones and it was very time consuming, but the final product really made it worth my time that I was putting into this. Hop back in the editor and then you have your piece of fruit that you can drop on top of it. I made it a little bit smaller and I moved it down a little bit and in a little bit. So when the piece of fruit got close, it was just barely showing on top of the can, just enough to sell that effect. The last step you need to do is add sound effects. It is always overlooked adding just some water splash, you know, a little bit of an impact noise or like bubbles from a soda can, something like that is really gonna tie all this in together. There you go, guys. That's how you create this effect inside DaVinci Resolve. If you like this video and you learned something, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below, let me know what you thought of the final result. And if you would like me to create more videos along this style, I had a blast doing it. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you don't miss any of my new videos coming out. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'll see you next time. Peace!